Hey. We're on, everyone. Hey, welcome to another Hello. episode of We're Not Helpful, a podcast about books, our thoughts, opinions, and recommendations. I'm Eloise, and joining me as always is Brayton and Julian. Hello. Hello. <laughs> is saying hello helpful because I feel like that goes against the spirit of this whole podcast? <laughs> also, saying hello implies that we haven't, like, prepared, like, you haven't just jumped on and immediately started and assuming we're there. Well, you do if, pretend sometimes that you're not there when we introduce you guys. That's true. Uh, it's the sometimes. It's, <laughs> every time. Every it's the, time. It's the suspension of disbelief that the audience has to have. And they're very confused every time because they can't see us bantering. They can only hear us. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how have so. you both been this week? And as a novelty, I'm going to allow both of you to answer that question before I steamroll on this week. Yeah, I'm good. Maybe I don't want to answer it now. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> I've been good. Been enjoying the school holidays. You've been on uh, on a break, Brayton, up, yes. up north? Yep, went to Rainbow Beach, which for anyone that doesn't know... Uh, is on the Sunshine, or just above the Sunshine Coast, about three hours north of Brisbane. For anyone overseas, Brisbane is the capital city of Queensland, which is a state on the <laughs> northern east coast of Australia. <laughs> I, uh, you mm. know, I just assume that people know where everything is in Australia, but they probably don't, so they, I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> they really Fun don't. In fact, Rainbow Beach was actually settled by rainbows in the 1850s. Oh, yeah. very. Mm. Yeah. Very fun fact, Julian. Yeah. It <laughs> proved me wrong. Were you there? <laughs> yeah. That is, there's there's, okay. a, I, there's can't, a... I can't prove anything, unfortunately. Yeah. Like, there's no if... way to know. <laughs> Physically, no way to know at if you, all. If only if you... we had like access to some kind of, you know, uh, body of of international mm. consensus of information that you know that we could get online perhaps but it's, it's a little bit heretical a little bit fascist don't you think mm. i like these ideas no where, where are we going with i this? will say if you do okay. visit um please go out of your way to visit the memorial for the skittle war mm. <laughs> tragic. um yeah absolutely tragic so many oh. lives lost <laughs> so many skittles eaten yeah <laughs> they truly did taste the rainbow that day <laughs> Julian, how have you been? What have you been up to this week? I I got nothing after that. No, you got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> We've peaked. We should just end the episode there. We're not going to get right. any better. Great. Well, thank you. You have been listening. No, okay. We've, we'll move on. Um, did anyone have any books that they wanted to talk about specifically this week? I am being really very slow and I am still halfway through the Thursday Murder Club. Um, and it's finally getting exciting, I have to say. I was like, oh, we're finally getting to try to solve the murder, actually. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's right. Well, look, just yesterday I finished reading Plato's The Republic. Oh, yes, you did post about that on our socials. Did, yep. How was it? Ranching out into some philosophy. Um, look, I don't throw around the term life-changing book that often. <laughs> and of course, about Plato. Yeah, okay. and of course, today will be no exception. Okay, great. <laughs> Look, it's it was good. Like, I don't know if I fully grasped everything he did. And I think I said this to you, Julian, that his ideas about political theory and stuff, we've kind of expanded on over the last three or so thousand years since it was written. Mm. Um, but it's definitely definitely got some very interesting ideas. Is uh, he the I, one that I'm... said that said, like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our life? Yeah, that's a direct quote from him. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's a direct quote. Um, but no, but that's Socrates. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> and then everyone looked uh, beautiful at the camera. <laughs> and paused for God long, too long times before ad breaks. Dramatic that's effects. to smell the yes. fart acting. Ah, yeah, yes. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, great actors always spit when they talk. 
Mm. Just everywhere. <laughs> All right, we're delving into Friends references now. Please go on, Brian. There is nothing wrong with Friends references. Okay. I uh, know that that's all I got. That's the book I finished reading. Oh, yesterday. right. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Recommend? Um, if you're if you're looking to delve into philosophy, as I currently am going through a phase where I want to, then yes, definitely recommend. But I also recommend, um, as I did, watching a lot of YouTube videos about what the hell you're reading. <laughs> I, I I wouldn't recommend that. I, if I you, think that's, look, that's a thread I don't want to pull on. And that's fair enough. It's not for everybody. Um, but I did ha I did have a little rant I wanted to go on to about something. If you'll Ooh, indulge I me. Rants. Yes. yes love a good uh, rant. You, yes. You have the microphone. We can't really say no. Excellent. <laughs> um, so as I am a cool hip guy of I'm I'm a millennial, I believe. So I'm on the talk, as the cool kids call it. <laughs> oh my god, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> We're losing listeners. <laughs> Um, if we didn't lose them at the Rainbow Beach jokes, then there's no hope. Thank but you there... for the one person who's still listening. Thanks, Thank thanks Adrian, for still Thank you, listening. Adrian. <laughs> um, there's a current trend on the book talk side of TikTok at the moment where people will recommend a book. Okay. Mm. But and I have a I have a prop, which you won't get the full effect of this unless you watch the YouTube clip after you listen. But what they'll kind of say, they'll hold the book like this and be like, I just finished reading this book and it was it was so good. Let me tell you all about it. And they will talk for like three or four minutes holding the book like this. Someone describe how I'm holding the book. Okay, like, so you're what holding can you a... see? I can only see like the thickness of the book. It's horizontal, so I don't know what book it is. You're not yeah, showing I could, me I could, the cover. I could hold it. I could hold it vertically too. Okay, yeah. Like that. So you're just holding well, it. Well, now so you've that... just blown my mind. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay. Horizontal and vertical. You can tell yeah. I've been reading a lot of philosophy. <laughs> is it is it like a flex because of how thick it is? No, no. It is purely just to maintain engagement for the whole video because you're left going, oh, what book is it? What could it possibly be? <laughs> and then finally, after three or four minutes, they give their whole rant and review or whatever, and then they finally, it's this book, which this one is currently a um, Dresden Files book. Right. But then they'll finally reveal it only at the end of their video. And it really pisses me off. That's like... Um, I get why they do culture. it. Yeah, it's essentially clickbait. I get why they do it. But essentially, if if you don't show me the book within the first 10 seconds of the video, I'm just skipping it. Yeah. Like, nothing is that important. Like, for all means, go, this is a really cool book I just read. It's this one. And let me tell you about it. I'm interested then. But if you if you talk for three or four minutes without even naming the book or the author, they won't even do that. They won't name the book or the author. They'll just talk. You've lost me. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm it's just my age. Why on earth people who came up with that trend and thought that that would be a popular thing to well, do or is that... the the longer you have viewers the more money it generates ah okay and so if you bait them to stay on until the very end you know, three or four minutes that's a lot of money being generated yeah uh, you know admittedly like i fall into that trap on instagram sometimes when when like random reels will come up and they're like craft reels or they're like um gardening reels or mm. or cleaning reels and you want to get to the end to see the end product but the reel itself takes so long and there are just sometimes i'm like man i really wish i could just fast forward just so i could see what this thing looks like at the very end um and a lot of times they'll they'll bait you um into a part two. Oh, uh, okay like there's some that are like oh i just got this book this box delivered from some company or something they're doing partnership with and they'll talk about the company and talk about it and they'll finally open the box and it's just got like all the scrumpled paper at the top it says all right i'm going to open this in the next video so make sure you follow and like I'm like god damn i just wasted minutes of my time and with okay, how yeah the, and with how the TikTok algorithm is like sometimes it's actually really hard to find part two. Ah, oh, yeah that would be annoying yeah so that's just my little rant that if you're gonna do a book review or talk about books and not reveal the book in the first probably 10 to 15 seconds of the video, I'm just scrolling away. 
Yeah, it, it Julian seems to have a good thought there in relation to that. It it definitely seems like it. it it's just to get you reeled in to yeah. continually following them or or watching their videos, which I can understand. Like, I I suppose in a world of where people are trying to make it online and being influencers and whatever, yeah, you have to try and think of ways to draw your viewers in to continue yeah. to watch you. So I and get it. The market of at least people, even just on TikTok making videos, is so oversaturated now. Mm. And unfortunately, when one person does something that works, everyone picks up on that trend and they everyone run it into the ground around. until the next trend comes along. Comes along. <laughs> ah, but... Well, you've heard it here first, guys. If you're going to recommend or review a book, make sure you give us the title of the book. Yes, please do. Or you'll upset Brayton, who is currently <laughs> going through his old man phase. I 100% am. Are I'm you so out of touch? Age. Or no, is it just it's the, the children that are wrong? The, it's the children that are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of out of touch people, I think that segues really good into the topic I had planned for tonight. Wonderful. Seamless. Yes. Tell everyone that that's what you well, were doing. <laughs> our, our last two episodes were a bit heavy, I will say. Mm. They were good. I think they were great discussions. Yeah. But they were a bit heavy. So I thought today we'd do something a bit fun. Ooh, excellent. Um, and I am totally stealing this from another uh, book themed podcast I listen to called oh. Two, Two to Ramble. <laughs> Shout out Ooh, to them. Stealing ideas is the best type of ideas. Yes, exactly. It's never After... been done in the history of podcasting before. <laughs> After I just had a rant on people just picking up trends and <laughs> dragging them into the ground. <laughs> so let's try this trend. <laughs> let's do this trend. I am I am sure they are not the first ones to do it. Maybe they are. I don't know. But it sounded like fun, so I thought we would do it. Essentially, what I've done is gone on to Goodreads. Do you both know Goodreads? Yeah. I know of Goodreads. Of Goodreads. It's essentially just a website. It's almost like book social media, almost, mm. where you go on and you can tell people what book you're currently reading, what books you've read, and leave reviews for them. Mm. Um, so I have gone on and gone on to a few famous books. I think I've got eight or nine here. We may or may not get through all of them. Mm -hmm. um, but I filtered the reviews to one star reviews. <laughs> so I I found Ooh. some one star reviews of some books and I want to play a game a la Saw <laughs> where you guys can guess what book I'm talking about. And if you don't, a la we Saw, die? You, will, you will lose a finger for each one. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> so I asked you both to get a cleaver ready. Yeah. I assume you've uh, got that. Yep, it's right down here. <laughs> My cat's gonna chew mine off. Okay. Perfect, actually. Really going right into that whole saw program. Oh, jig <laughs> Jigsaw needs to do a trap that's just cats. Oh just cats no. Cats fly at you. Is there is there any with rats? I know rats are horrible. Is there? I don't know if there are. Just All Jigsaw it... needs to do, the punishment is just putting a non-cat person in a room of cats. That's, that's it. That's the punishment. Mm, that's true, yeah. The, just, no! Ah. Especially ginger cats. <laughs> mm. You have 30 seconds to give this cat its medication. <laughs> <laughs> give this cat a bath. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, nah, just give up. You're done. No. Oh, my goodness. Wonderful. Put Keep the items on the table on the table and every Do not now allow and then a loud noise fall. goes off unexpectedly <laughs> <laughs> um just as a segue before we start i just wanted to say yeah saw saw one the first saw film one of the most brilliant horror films ever all the rest are just schlock porn like bleh. <laughs> I don't know, I've seen a lot of schlock porn in my time. I think mm. Saw might rise above that <laughs> a little bit. I both agree and disagree with you, Eloise. Okay. <laughs> that is a conversation for another time. I admittedly have only seen the first three films, though, actually. So I haven't. That's, that's I... all you need. Watch Saw, um, Saw 10. Okay. Legitimately like the best. There's 10 of them. And there's the... more than 10, isn't there? They're making 11 right now. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, if we're. If we're including, um, uh, what's it called? Spiral. Yeah. Then like I was thinking. Then technically, Saw 10 Chris Rock would films. be. Yeah, that one's not good. Oh, that's a shame. 
Saw 10 is legitimately the best reviewed of all of them. Really? Like Better it's in than the, the first one. It's in the 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, wow. Okay. And the first one good. is only like 50% or something like that. Really? Like yeah. Saw 10 is legitimately a very good movie. The first one had such an amazing twist, though. Anyway, mm. we're getting off topic. We're talking about horror films. Yes. <laughs> That's another podcast. <laughs> yeah. Julie and I have done that one. So look back through our catalogue for our Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey review. Eagerly waiting for the rest of the Pooniverse to uh, appear so we can cover those as well. Cannot oh wait. God. The, sec I, like, the second can... one gave me hope. You mm. can both handle that without Oh, me. we will. <laughs> All right. All right. So I have gathered here, I think there's nine reviews of books that some of us may or may not have read, but they are all very famous books. I have edited them slightly to remove references to authors. So I might just say the author or the character. Okay. Um, and I have not accredited anyone because I don't know if they really wanted their names on this. So they well, are. They put at, it on a public site. So they, they but did. I, I fully support that you're not going to say yes. who it is. If you want to find them... out who it is, go to Goodreads and, and find yes. the reviews. And, and it was some of these reviews, these one star reviews. Some of them are great, but it was pretty difficult because I've tried to find ones that give the idea of the book, but at the same time, don't just give away what book it is. Okay. Okay. I'm interested. So if I if I slip up and accidentally say an author or the book, then here you go. So are we ready? Yes. Here is book Let's number one. This. And I would love to get your thoughts on the books afterwards, because I know some of these are books that all three of us enjoy. Oh, okay. I'm excited now. Okay, here's the first one. It's The Great Gatsby. <laughs> All right. Book number two. <laughs> no, and these are in these are in no particular order. Like I haven't ranked okay. them of easiest to hardest order. Is there a polite version? Oh, sorry. I should start. Should you wait wait till the end of the review before yelling out your guesses? Yeah, I I say get through yeah. the whole review first and then yeah. we'll start guessing. And then we'll discuss. Is there a polite version of saying, I hope you're roasting in hell since you died? If there is not, there should be. Once on IMDb, I saw some Yahoo saying to a naysayer uh, that has not read this book, it's your loss. The naysayer replied sarcastically, my loss? Oh no, what will my boss and my wife and my friends think of me when I tell them I gave this book one star? That's my feeling as well. This book is only for the pendants and the elite of snootiness, many of whom will be real behemoths intellectually. I persevered with this book just to know how awful a classic can be. I can assure you folks, they don't make them like this anymore. <laughs> I don't think I got it. Okay, I admit that. The problem with this book is that it's boring, but it's about... Uh, but it's that 99% of people will find it tedious enough not to read it entirely. It's hypnotic in its lack of actual plot. It wouldn't get published today. All right. Please tell me it's Moby Dick. <laughs> Julian? I want to say Moby Dick as well, but I, didn't, I don't know. I feel like that's a, a red herring if I can have a small pun. <laughs> Are Wonderful. you locking locking in your guess, Eloise? I, I'm locking in. It's Moby Dick, isn't it? <laughs> it is Moby Dick, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever that person is, I love you. <laughs> there was another one that I didn't put in. It was just one sentence that said, how can a book about the ocean be this dry? Ah, <laughs> oh, that's Ooh, an amazing, that's, amazing that's review. <laughs> Um, so I don't, I don't know if you have much more to add to that review, Eloise. No. We, we, if you want to hear what I have to add about that review, go back and listen to the Moby Dick retrospective <laughs> episode yep. from a few months back. All right. Julian, do you have anything to add about that one? No. I've never no. read it. I don't plan to. Why would I waste my time? Perfect. All right. Book two. Good life choices, Julian. <laughs> Here we go. I hate this book. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I despise this book. Despise it's is Moby in Dick all again. caps. It, it, yeah, every book here is Moby Dick. <laughs> this is just to vindicate you, Eloise. <laughs> okay, so I hate this book. No, I despise this book. 
This book is going on my top 10 most hated books of all time. I don't think this book is awful, but I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. The writing is so dull. So is spelt with three O's. And the amount Ooh, of... Very dull. Yeah. And the amount of telling instead of showing infuriates me. We've been reading this in class for two months and I still hate it. The amount of times I've been told to dissect the deeper meaning in the author's dry ass writing, dry ass writing is in all caps, and explain Wait, why he a did double this. S or it's a double, a, a double S. Okay, okay. so American. <laughs> and explain why the and explain why the author did this. I'm so done with this book. <laughs> and why can't we have any women? We read about a whole ass village of men. How do these people oh, procreate? Okay. No. I'm so done with this book. I hate it and I will never think about this again. I was okay, I was honestly oh. thinking the Great Gatsby <laughs> up until the the village bit. And now I'm like, okay, No, there are so definitely it's... women in the Great Gatsby. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> now it's a village full of men. I was so thinking no... maybe Steinbeck, but Oh, then I went with Lord of the Flies when you said village full of men, but then mm. the procreation. Oh, but that's boys. Yeah. That's not a village. It's trapped on an island. Um, village full of men. Village full of men. It's not like, <laughs> please tell me it's not Lord of the Rings or something. <laughs> it's not Lord of the Rings, no. No, okay. Yeah. I mean, there's some women in Lord of the Rings. Not a lot, but there's some. <laughs> um and they go to many villages. Well, they say Lord of the Rings doesn't pass the Bechdel test. No, it doesn't. Not unless you count if in the movie versions, not unless you count um, Eowyn speaking to the young girl who came on the horseback. That's a, that's a YouTube edit of Lord of the Rings, but it's only women talking to other women. Yeah, and it's like and it's literally that one seconds. scene. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the end. At the end, that's horrible. <laughs> anyway, we're not here to talk about the Bechdel test. We can if we want to on another that's, episode. We'll put a today. we'll put a pin in that one. Um, Study yeah, in I've, class. I've got nothing. I've, you got I nothing. Honestly, I don't know. Julian, he's thinking. Julian's thinking. I am trying to. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. But uh, so my knowledge like, of. Studied in class is limited to Australian and yeah, or so Queensland. I will, I, class, I, so... will, I will say this is a book that I read in high school. Oh, okay. Can you give us a hint in terms of when it was written? Is it an old classic or it, is it, it a modern? It is a 20th century book, but first half okay. of the 20th century. First half. Ooh. Mm. So first half 20th century. And it is, like it is one that is probably book. found in most high school curriculums at some point, I'm sure. Most it's not it like the it, chrys it oh, it's not like the me. chrysalids or something, is it? No. no. That's very Australian. Um I never read the English. chrysalids actually. You're gonna hate oh, this oh. You're gonna hate you're both gonna hate this review when I re reveal which book it is. Oh I'm gonna oh, okay. <laughs> no, I, I'm giving up. I can't I can't think of anything. Julian. No. Julian. I'm I All can't. Right. Uh, Eloise, you were on the right track when you said Lord of the Rings. Uh-huh. The Hobbit. It's the Hobbit. Oh, it's, it was the Hobbit. Ah, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna hunt that person down, <laughs> and I'm going to burn their house down. No, please don't burn anyone's no. house down. That no, <laughs> screw you. I'm sorry. Boo, I, it, boo. <laughs> they did clearly. You are not the first person to say that because they added like a little postscript at the end saying. Some of you may say I'm too young to appreciate it. I don't care. I've read classics from the 1700s that I can wholeheartedly appreciate. And this book is written by an old white man in the 30s. I don't need to appreciate this book. Like, I'm sorry. I enjoyed that book because it felt like a, a younger person's novel. When I first read it, I was very, I was like early teens and it enthralled me so much. And I don't know if I've spoken about this on the podcast before, but like, up until that point, I had only ever read The Babysitter's Club, which is a fine series for a tween girl to be reading obsessively, I suppose. <laughs> you know, whatever. 
uh, but like it literally broadened my horizon past this one specific type of book and it was I remember thinking to myself when I was reading it this is the best book I have ever read and yeah and and then from there like I started reading mm. uh Dr Dragons of Pern I started reading Discworld um uh, I can't even remember what other stuff that I've read since then like Heaps of stuff, obviously. Yeah. You <laughs> but, didn't just stop at the Hobbit and went, well, I've hit the peak. Yes. Nothing's no, getting better than this. Clear, clearly not. So. <laughs> um, this might be a good, oh, wow. good insert to just say that the opinions expressed by these reviewers are their own. <laughs> and they have every right to these reviews. And they're entitled to them, but that doesn't mean that they're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, your thoughts. <laughs> I mean... Uh, Tolkien can be quite dry, but I feel He's like if you're going dry to in the Hobbit, mm. he does not yeah. spend five pages the Hobbit... describing a tree on a hill. In the, the Hobbit, Hobbit is it... much more readable than Lord of the Rings. If if he's going to feel that way about the Hobbit, definitely he should not read Lord of the Rings. <laughs> no, oh, no, <laughs> fuck this. The Hobbit's again. fine. It's <laughs> it's a nice adventure book, and yeah, it's fun, and I didn't find it really had a lot of deeper meaning to it it's a kid's it's a kid's adventure story it's literally just the hero's mm. journey which is why you're showing and or telling and not showing or whatever it was that he said like yeah telling not showing Lots of telling not showing yeah i mean which that's had, why you because like, it's a kid's book <laughs> mm. that's lord of the rings more than the hobbit i feel yeah, yeah. all right shall we go on to the next one sure yes, book number three this one literally starts with sigh <laughs> I don't know whether it was because I had high expectations for this book, but I was severely disappointed. It seems grossly overrated in my opinion. Nothing rather extraordinary took place. It didn't connect to me on any level, nor have any outstanding moral or philosophical points either. It was just rather dull, flat and unenjoyable, and the characters were not as likable as some may deem them. The plot did not fully intrigue me, and that's... And that is why I must rate it so. The reason for it to be considered a classic is unfathomable to me. Lastly, this review was not intended to offend anyone or disrespect the author in any way, but merely state my opinion. However, I may find myself giving this book another chance in future, as it seems a few people did not enjoy it earlier in life, but came to later on. Also, my literature teacher is mad at me for this, so please don't come at me. I have been reprimanded enough. Is this the Great Gatsby? <laughs> Is it? Oh, Harry Potter. I don't know. <laughs> it does Is feel it... a bit more Gatsby-like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially with a literature teacher reprimanding him. Gatsby? What Gatsby? <laughs> I don't fucking get that line. Anyway. <laughs> um. So you both think the Great Gatsby? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to... We're going to yep. guess The Great Gatsby that, every time until it is The Great Gatsby. That, that one was The Great Gatsby. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so you're currently... Your literature teachers. <laughs> you're currently two out of three. You guessed correctly. Three. You only lose one finger. Okay. Hey. Hang on. <laughs> okay. This one I actually picked two reviews for because they're both pretty short. Uh, the first one says, This book was just terrible dichotomous morality, heavy-handed storytelling, needless pandering, the glorification of the simple man and the degradation of knowledge would not recommend. So that was the first one. Second mm -hmm. one, did not finish at 50%. This started out so strong and compelling, but then totally fell flat on its face in my opinion. There is so much focus on character building, but the story itself needs to actually continue on rather than almost disappear completely for the middle of book. Uh, completely disappear for the middle of the book. Um, I'm giving up on this author's novels altogether. That's both the reviews. Is this something like Catcher in the Rye? Or is that the one with the guy who has the mouse? <laughs> I'm not describing it, it are, you, are you thinking of Mice and Men? Maybe it's that one. Is it Does Mice, Mice and Men actually have a mouse in it? No. No. It's obsessed with know. rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> why, is it, why is it called mice and men then? It's the same. Why not? 
of mice and men? Are we mice or are we men? You chase your dreams or do you give up on them to just, you know, exist? Is it and that there's one? a rabbit. No, 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 no. The, the <laughs> giant Lenny is obsessed with rabbits. He wants a rabbit farm. He wants to settle down with his friend on a rabbit farm. I, I clearly haven't read the book. It's very sad. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. So I'm thinking, is it that one? Mm. Or is it or is it Atlas Shrugged, maybe? <laughs> oh, Atlas Shrugged. Oh man, opinions about that book. I love reading Atlas Shrugged uh, reviews. <laughs> there. Oh good. I thought you had decided to it... enjoy reading Atlas Shrugged. No, 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 <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I mean, if you're having a bad day and you want a bit of a laugh, just go online and read reviews for Atlas Shrugged. They're <laughs> amazing. <laughs> So is this also considered a classic? Um, by some. I, I would say it's not it's not one that I think would be studied in a literature class, but it's definitely a well well regarded and pretty popular book. Hmm. So not Steinbeck then. You keep going back to Steinbeck. You just you have something against Steinbeck? No, he's, Steinbeck's a great author, but you either love him or you hate him. Okay, fair enough. I've given a couple of my thoughts, so Julian, <laughs> mm. I'm thinking. Remember, podcast. You have to. Put your, your, your I, I'm out pondering. Loud. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I shall go into a soliloquy. No, uh, <laughs> let's see. It's not something that's studied in literature, most likely, but it is a popular novel. Yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. Well regarded. Still, you can walk into any bookstore now and buy a copy. Hmm. That doesn't narrow it down. No, it doesn't at all. That's all the books. <laughs> can you give us a time period of when it may have been written? Uh, let me just <clears throat> quick. Let me quickly check when it was Thinking written. Thinking about that whole simple man jibe. <clears throat> hmm. Oh, it, mm. it was published in, let me check. First published in 1978. 1978. Yep. So it's an older book. Why is it that I still think that's not so old? Yeah, I know. I was about to say, oh, only 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. No. No. No, I get it. No. no ideas. All right. That one, those two were reviews for The Stand. Oh. Okay, I was thinking, I wonder if it was a Stephen King novel. <laughs> it was. Julian, I don't... Julian's fuming a bit. <laughs> no, I just feel that first review doesn't really seem to fit. What's he talking about? The simple man's mm. life or journey or whatever it was that he said. There's no real... He's not talking says... about... Uh, what's what's the character's name that spells everything? Tom Emma... Cullen. Is he talking about literally the simple-minded person or is he talking about the simple man? I don't know. It's an odd review. Mm. It doesn't really seem to fit the stand. Mainly because isn't there like multiple protagonists, not just yeah. one person? Yeah. I will say he. the second review I read does have a point about how the story does kind of meander through the middle of the book a lot. Mm. It does, and it reaches a point where <laughs> Stephen King himself didn't even know how to continue it, so he actually killed off the main character in mm. order to move the plot along. Mm. Yeah. Which some would say yeah. was lazy writing. Yeah. And then or the was ending... he ahead of his time in surprise? <laughs> <laughs> no, he completely fridged the character. Oh, okay. Fair yeah. 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 He freely admits that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, well, there you go. Yeah. Again, I think Julian disagrees. <clears throat> oh, that's, well, it's a great book, but yes, I do understand why people would get to the middle of it and go, eh. Oh, yeah, absolutely. When you get to the middle of it, like when you hit like page 600 and there's still 600 pages to go. <laughs> Especially if you're reading the unabridged version, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Though, um, <clears throat> yeah, still never finished that, I think, the 2020 miniseries or whenever. Oh, it's was. awful. Don't, don't, yeah. don't even bother. Go and watch the one with Gary Sinise and Rob Lowe. That I mean, was the that... one that I saw. The Whoopi Goldberg one could have been good if they just didn't edit the timeline. 
Yeah, it was weird. Surely there's a fan edit online that oh. put it all back into chronological order. The the problem with that one is that anyone who's not a Stephen King fan or a fan of that book won't understand what's happening, so they're not going to want to watch any more of it. And anyone who has read the book is going to look at that and go, what the fuck have you done? This mm. doesn't... <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> and they're not going to want to watch it. So, like... <clears throat> Try something different by all means, but you just alienate literally everyone there. Yeah. Mm. I will have to get to the Gary Sinise one eventually. It's good. Uh, Except for Molly Ringwald. Okay. I'll skip the Molly Ringwald scene. Who did she play again? Brand, so you can't skip her. Otherwise, you can miss uh, like damn, three quarters of it. Yeah, she's an important character. Yeah. All right. Next book, one. Book number, what are we up to? One, two, three, four. Oh, book five. number five. Not doing well. No, mm. I think this one you this one you'll probably get easier. Some of these are easier, some of them are harder. If I were say eleven years old, I might think this book was worth three stars. You already know why I'm reading it as an adult, despite its obvious appeal to youthful readers. It has had enormous crossover appeal, uh, so that not only children and teenagers are picking it up, but also supposedly mature readers. I have nothing against popular fiction or young adult fiction. When my youngest brother started reading fantasy fiction while I was embarking on a PhD in literature, I happily bought him a pile of <laughs> fantasy fiction. <laughs> when people are young, encouraging the reading habit is the best thing you can do. It starts a healthy habit. I began with Stephen King myself, and that was preceded by my own fantasy phase. What's put, what puts me off these books is how they have become access, acceptable reading for adults. I have had graduate students who want to write their M MA dissertation about them. I get it. There is some interesting stuff being done in genre fiction that deserves some academic attention, but believe me, this is not it. This stuff is for immature minds. It's not even good or innovative fantasy. The main character is a Mary Sue, and the world that the author has created is one bland cliché after another. So if you are 17 years or younger, go ahead, read all the books. In fact, read whatever you'd like, because at this stage in life, it is good for your brain. But if you are an adult, these books should be way beneath your maturity level. If they are not, then don't talk to me until you have decided to grow up. Oh, jeez, that's I, I picked this one just because it is so condescending. Uh, is it The Hunger Games? It is, not, it is not The Hunger Games. Oh, it's not The Hunger Games. Okay. So is it? I'm assuming it's fantasy then. It is. Fantasy. I want to say Harry Potter. Yeah, Harry Potter. It is a fantasy series with several books in the series. Okay, so yeah, I suppose Hunger Games isn't really fantasy. Um, yeah, Harry maybe Potter Harry, or Twilight. Maybe Harry Potter then. It's Twilight fantasy or science fiction. It's vampires and werewolves. Uh, yeah. I suppose. Oh, maybe it's Twilight then. What do you think, Julian? You're sticking oh. with Harry Potter. My first instinct is Harry Potter. Yeah. 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 I know that's pretty scathing to for Harry Potter. Like eh, it like... is a, I, I, it's a very scathing, and no shade to the person that wrote this. But it, no, uh, it, it's throw shade. The toff went out and got a bloody masters or whatever in <laughs> literature. I mean, I thought our <laughs> theatre degree was a waste of time. <laughs> well, not a waste. It was yep. great life experience. What have we done with it? What have we done? Yeah, you know what? I can't back that up. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go with Twilight. Twilight? And Julie, Julian's going with Harry Potter? I'm okay, going with th Harry Potter. This was a review of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Oh, Nailed specifically it. the... Oh, okay. Yeah, but wow. I think it, I think the review applies to the whole series. Okay. Having, having said that, I, I would agree if it was written about Twilight. That is just terrible writing in mm. any way, shape or form. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yes. Mm. Um... But yeah, I just I just found the tone of this person's review here very um, condescending to anyone that might still enjoy the Harry Potter series. Oh well, mm. yeah, they've done a PhD in literature. Of course, yeah. they're going to be condescending. Have the, <laughs> did they write this review before or after uh, all of the stuff that's, about J.K. Rowling has? Come that's out? the that's the thing I had to sort through because a heck of a lot of the reviews are just I refuse to read these now that Rowling's um, Rowling's opinions about trans yeah. people have come out so i had i had to find one that didn't actually mention it and i believe this was written um i can't remember it was written i think before that all came to light okay 
Yeah. He oh, prattles like... on about the brilliance of Dostoevsky. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that review. <laughs> yeah. I like I don't I don't agree with I don't agree with the condescending part of it. Mm. He might he or she might hit on a few kind of valid points. Oh, I look, suppose. there there are definitely critiques you can make about Rowling's writing and her world building yeah. and her characterizations. Like you can absolutely make critiques about that. When we um, consider Harry and Mary Sue, is Harry really should we Mary should Sue? we explain <sighs> should we explain briefly what a Mary Sue is for anyone that doesn't know? Yeah, I think so. Julian, just a bland character. Kind of like a, a Sarah Plain and Tall Girl Next Door. Doesn't really add much. Doesn't really have much of a journey. Doesn't really evolve or or, or have a real interesting story arc to them. Mm. It's just bland. Actually, a and... really a really good example that I heard once is, it may or may not apply, but if you want a really brief, it's Paul Atreides in the Dune series. Mm. Especially if you've just seen the movies. He's just good at everything he does automatically. Yeah. Mm. And that is definitely a trait of the Mary Sue. Like, they can do no wrong. Another one is uh, Ray from the Star Wars sequels. They're kind of like the chosen one, that you yes. are special because you are special. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. For no other I mean, reason you, than being special. <laughs> you could kind of apply that to Harry, but at the same time, I don't think he's a Mary Sue. I don't think he's anything great. I think Rowling portrays him as a fairly mediocre wizard. Mm. There's nothing yeah. special about him except for how his parents died mm. yeah. and how and it all Voldemort came down to, failed to kill him. And it was all came down to fate as well between was it him or was it Neville? Because and they just chose Harry for the because Yeah, Harry's just kind of caught because. up in it. Yeah, he's nothing he's nothing he's um like you said, Julian, he's a painfully average wizard. Mm. He doesn't excel at anything. Except quit it. Kill a baby. <laughs> Seriously, like how does Voldemort because... fail to kill it? Drop him because... out the window and he's dead. Because love, because love, Julian. <laughs> love does not defy gravity. That, that means... <laughs> 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 like... But no, he decided like to throw a spell at him. <laughs> it's not some dangerous <laughs> wizard from across the field. It's, All it's right, a baby. I think we're getting bogged down in. <laughs> The failings in J.K. Rowling's writings. Let's move on to the next All one. All right. This one, there are, again, two reviews for this one because mm. the first one here is quite short. I'll be surprised if you can guess it from this first one. This review just says misogynistic shit. <laughs> it does not narrow it down. <laughs> that's, no, the whole, that could be, that's the whole that review. That could be a lot. That okay. could be a lot. <laughs> I, I will read the slightly longer one. All right. This book is a classic and I like, and I usually like classics, but this time, nope, I hated it, and I hated it with a passion. Why? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First, I found myself despising the hero throughout the entire book, and if I can't root for the hero, somebody please tell me why on earth should I read the doggone thing? It's not like it's short either, it's long and boring. I also found myself quarrelling with a good many of the author's technical choices. Like when he inserted several long chapters of this book, the hero was supposed to be reading and made us, the audience, read them too. No, 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 no. That's not how you hold the reader's attention. Show, don't tell. And don't make me read a boring political treatise inside an already boring political novel, because I won't. Because uh, I won't thank you for it. The author's writing can get incredibly gross at times too, not to mention semi-explicit. Proceed with caution, folks. Bottom line, I didn't enjoy this book at all, and if I hadn't been assigned it for school, I'd never start it, let alone finish it. I'm not glad I did either. I was going to guess June, but then I don't think June would be assigned as a school book. No, I don't not imagine sure it's it would be. a classic either. No. Uh, June, June would be considered a classic of science fiction. Mm. Mm. But not what we regard it as. Yeah, it would depend how you... Yeah, like it's not a, as you said before, it's not a Dostoevsky. <laughs> Speaking of which, is it one of those Russian novelists? Uh, it is Sounds not. Sounds like a war and peace. No. It is not okay. a Russian novelist. 
Okay. Um, so like a something by Dickens, good. Tale of Two Cities. That's misogynistic. It it is a twentieth century novel. Okay. Mm. Uh. So is it like class like classic just fiction? It's classic. It's classic fiction. If I t- if I I fear that if I tell you the genre, it will make it too easy to guess. Oh no. Okay. Um. Because it's very. It's a very mm. specific type of fiction. Oh, like it, okay. it's genre. If if I say the genre, it's usually like the first one you think of. If I say this genre, damn. Okay. Um. If you get really stuck, I'll tell you. But all right, Julian, have you got any ideas? Mm, I don't know. I was I was really hung up on it being um Tolstoy, something like a War and Peace, but Brayton says no, and it's long, which it doesn't usually fit the classics that I know of. They're usually rather short. All right. Oh. Would you would, would you like me to give you the specific genre? Okay. Okay. Sure. It is it is usually known. It's usually held up as the standard of dystopian fiction. Uh, 1984. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. 1984. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I, if I told you that, I knew you'd get it immediately. Ah, uh, 1984. Okay. Misogynistic. I don't recall that but then again i feel like that probably would have been intentional i think it absolutely was intentional like not i don't that, think someone that i didn't complain that that book is misogynistic because well it's like post modern propaganda like, is, is sure. part of it is part of it because um i think winston is the main character yeah, uh, it's been a really long time since I last I read think 1984. Is, is part of it just because he was willing to take so much risk, essentially just to get laid? Maybe, maybe I. Because I really, the impetus of him trying to, you know, break out of Big Brother's grasp was because he saw an attractive woman and wanted to sleep with her. Essentially, I suppose. I may be like... misremembering. It has been several years since I read the book as well. Oh, I thought uh, like... he was trying to get her to rebel or run away at least with him but she went and got herself reprogrammed yeah i feel like i i feel like saying misogynistic shit is is not fair i feel like that's an inaccurate Mm. assumption um i think i mean i guess big brother was run by men but like Mm. the world kind of was when it was written but it was like it was it i mean the point of that book was to sort of signal hey let's watch out for these dangers kind of things and then uh, it, the point of that book was to say hey the russians are coming lock your doors well, and yeah, let us handle it yeah but I mean, misogynist is a stretch yeah, yeah. no more well, so like, than any other book written at the time maybe mm. i don't know if anyone else has any <clears throat> opinions on yeah. that it has been a long time since i've last read it so i will maybe... say this the second of you did way. get it right that it is very much a political book. Oh, yeah. It is, absolutely. 100%. That's the point of it, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. I I read it. Well, I did the audio book uh, narrated by Stephen Fry. And oh, he, did, he okay. did a very good job of that, if you're looking for an audio book recommendation of that book. He has such a soothing voice. Yes, he actually did. It was a double. It was uh, 1984 and Animal Farm. Oh, okay, yep. Both narrated by Stephen Fry. Animal Farm is brilliant that's a really good book i've not read that one actually i have meant to all right all right all right this this one i think is going to be an easy one for both of you Mm -hmm. you say that yeah formula for an epic fantasy novel one set in an alternate medieval england two create a cast of hundreds too many for the readers to keep straight three include your standard archetypal characters Handsome, young hero, evil, conniving, power, hungry, woman slash witch, etc. Et all ad nauseum. Throw in some magic, maybe some mystical uh, animals. Five, add a liberal dose of gratuitous sex scenes. Six, for heaven's sake, stretch that plot out and make it a series so that paychecks keep rolling in. <laughs> Is that it? And yep, that's it. Wheel of time. 
<laughs> no, not the Wheel of Time. Oh, it's not Wheel of Time. Not oh, Wheel wow, of okay. Time. Although all of those would also probably apply to Wheel of Time. <laughs> when you said stretch. Oh, hang on. It's Game of Thrones, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> it's a Song of Ice and Fire series. Of course. Yeah, sorry. So, Yes, that's right. <laughs> the book series is called A Song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> yeah, but that, that one is specifically for A Game of Thrones. Yes. But I feel oh. like it can apply to all of the books as well. Actually, is there gratuitous sex scenes in Wheel of Time? I've not read that. that um, no, there are, there's definitely sex scenes, but they're more implied than okay than um shown. gratuitous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think George Martin does go out of his way to make it very gratuitous in the books. Mm. Then again, like to his defense, he's he has said before, like he was criticized for doing that, but he said that. If I write a battle scene that vividly describes an axe splitting open the head of another person with their blood and guts and brains spilling out everywhere, like people are fine with that. But if I write an equally descriptive scene of a couple in love having sex, then everyone's up in arms about it. And he's like, I don't see the difference. It's like the scene from Hannibal with the the dead woman. They had to cover up her, her naked butt with more blood. Yeah, and considering mm. she was, I think, flayed. Yeah, her, her, her... her lap muscles had been pulled out like angel wings. Oh, yeah. God. No, let's not talk about that, thanks. <laughs> but the, the, the censors didn't like the fact that she was nude, so yeah. the director oh. covered her body with blood. Mm. Oh, no. And that was fine. Oh, that was fine. A nipple. Yeah. How no, horrifying. no, it was her butt. It was just a butt. No, no nipples, just butt. No, just a butt. Oh, my just God. Yeah. I'm so traumatised from mm. her butt. <laughs> Sorry, I might be a little bit sarcastic there. Have you have you seen Hannibal, Eloise? I haven't. Are you talking about the TV show? Yeah, or the TV, movie? Show. Okay, TV no, show. TV show. Great oh, show. Brilliant. I keep hearing, so but I also good. hear that it ends on a cliffhanger, and then it got cancelled. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't want to watch it. But like, no, 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 but, watch, is it... <laughs> no. It it complete it it completely ends in a satisfying way, even though it's a cliffhanger. Mm. I still think it has a satisfying ending. The it's, only... Yeah, it's both a cliffhanger, but you can live with it and go, yeah. The okay. only good way to end it. The only okay. reason it's it's a cliffhanger is because um, Silence of the Lambs, you knew Silence of the Lambs was coming up. Right, mm. oh, right. okay. Like, Fair if enough. this was just a standalone TV show, it ends in a completely satisfactory way. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'll consider it. Which I think, I think the issue was they didn't have the rights to Silence of the Lambs. No, the, then they made that god awful Clarice show. Yeah, <laughs> which they couldn't mention Hannibal at all because they didn't have the no. rights to that character. What's the point then? I think they got canceled. Literally, up. no point. Yeah, no, like thirteen yeah. episodes or something. Yeah, it was no point. But every every now and then, there's rumblings that oh, well, Hannibal looks like it might be revived for another season, and everyone gets excited, and then nothing eventuates. Even though I think Mads Mikkelsen has said he would come back. If they got it again, oh, that's cool. I'm still hoping for a third season of Mindhunter. Still oh watched, yeah, still they have been. It. They have been sprinkling hints that every maybe, now and then. Just as we maybe, start to yeah. forget about it, someone involved in the show yeah. goes. Maybe, maybe it's such a great show. <laughs> okay, it's we are down to our final two books here. Ooh, Excellent. Here's, an, here's another review. I feel like you'll get this one. This is just a one sentence review for the first one, but I do have a longer one just in case. Uh, this book, Jesus Christ, just have sex. <laughs> what book am I talking about? Are you pandering to me, Brayton? No, no. no I, okay. I said this review to my wife and she got the book instantly. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Huh. Let me know if you want me to read the longer one if you're having trouble. I feel like this could be a review for the X Files, personally. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yes, the it's the, it's the novelization of an X Files episode. You got it. Actually, they do have books. <laughs> <laughs> they do have books. They do. They yeah. do. Um, They're right. not great. <laughs> is it something that has been um, uh, adapted into a television or movie? Series. Yes, like, sev several times. Several times. Oh, several okay. times. Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> yes, that's it. 
<laughs> All right. Would you would you like me to read the longer review? <laughs> okay. And you're, you're going to kick yourself as soon as you work out what book it is too. Probably. Uh, the most overrated book in the history of literature. The plot, <laughs> the plot borders between meaninglessness and trivial. I was forced to read this book in ninth grade English class. This was perhaps the most tedious school assignment I've received to date. For several pages, a lady remarks to a man about what wonderful handwriting he has. Not exactly gripping material. The entire book seemed to be about hormone-driven, marriageable age creatures trying to outwit each other in word and on the dance floor. The book is bad enough, but to complicate matters, women pledge allegiance not only to the book, but also to the gazillion hour movie. Uh, I am so stumped. It's all like Pride and Prejudice, is it? It is, is it Pride and Prejudice? It's Pride and oh. Prejudice. <laughs> You got it. Okay. <laughs> so do you think Jesus Christ just have sex as an apt review of Pride and Prejudice? Yes, but I'm probably one of those types of people that <laughs> enjoy the, the ride without the er eroticism. Of you enjoy the ride without the ride. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't like roller coasters. <laughs> I mean, Julia, I, have, I haven't read Pride and Prejudice. I have. It's actually very, you know, it's one of those books where it's just like, this is kind of long and boring, mm. as much like a lot of classics written at the time. I actually prefer Sense and Sensibility. Um, I'm not actually really a Pride and Prejudice girl. I know it's terrible, <gasps> but I I much prefer Sense and Sensibility and not just the book, but I also prefer the Emma Thompson Sense and Sensibility movie over the Pride and Prejudice uh, miniseries with um, Colin Firth, which is sacrilege, Radical. I know. It is, yeah. <laughs> um, I have read Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. I have that read count? that as well. I've read all three of, of, that, of that series. <laughs> I found the movie very disappointing. Oh, yeah. The Pride yeah. and Prejudice and Zombies movie was shit. I think they combined a lot of elements from all three books or something. How do you get that wrong? I don't Just understand. Just literally, literally remake Pride and Prejudice with zombies. It's not that hard. They just they tried to make a zombie film and they forgot the Pride and Prejudice part. I'm like. Yes, the thing, the thing that made the works. book. Yeah, the thing that made the book funny yeah. is that it literally is just the plot of Pride and Prejudice. With zombies oh, chucked with in. Zombies. Like yeah. yeah. That's what made the book good. Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters is also very, very good and very funny. And yeah, I and wish they made a movie out of that. It was through <laughs> the that that weird era of books where they were remaking them. There was also um Android Carriena. Yes. I wonder if it was mm. all by the same person. I've actually got Sense I've... and Sensibility and Sea Monsters in the Pride and Prejudice. I don't I don't think they all were books in my bookshelf somewhere. I know the person that wrote Pride and Prejudice and Zombies also wrote um, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Ah, uh, okay. Which the movie of that is quite fun. That's a fun little romp. Um, Julian, I know Pride and Prejudice is your favourite book. <laughs> <laughs> the look mm. he's giving Brayton right yes, now. Yes, I know. All right. Just because a book was written in the 1800s by a female author, it doesn't mean it has to be considered good. But is that this... is all I'll say about it. I mean, it's it's fine. It was like it was good for its time, and it was revolutionary for its time as well. But and now it's being pandered to every sixteen-year-old <laughs> boy across the <laughs> northern fucking hemisphere and the southern <laughs> hemisphere, and every okay. teacher has to read it and like it. Nah, uh... <laughs> there's better but... books out there to read. Is this a case of people just going like, you know, they'll say like, oh, music was better in the 70s. And it's, yeah. No, music wasn't just better. It's <clears> that <throat> the only music that lasted is the good music. Mm. There's a lot mm. of I, crap music that was done in the 70s that no one remembers. I feel like it's just hard to read now because it's the style of the writing is difficult mm. to keep your interest the story itself i enjoy it's it's the way that it's written is what can be a bit meandering um yeah much like a lot of the classic novels written at yeah. the time like dickens is exactly the same yeah 
Well, I don't know. I just However, to... A Muppet's Christmas Carol is the perfect film. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. That is the perfect <clears throat> Dickens down. adaption. Perfect, 100%. Don't We've... try and do a Christmas Carol unless you have Muppets in it. Hmm. We literally had this conversation over group chat today, didn't we, that, that Disney we doesn't did. know what to do with the Muppets. Yeah. You want to do all of your animation catalogue as live action now? Fine. But put the Muppets in them. <laughs> Like, because you're failing with what you're doing right now, Disney. My favorite suggestion, yeah, my favorite <laughs> suggestion is still doing Beauty and the Beast, where all the characters are Muppets, but the Beast is just a normal guy, but everyone considers him hideous. I only if it's Michael it's... Caine. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I do believe only... Michael Caine considers um, Scrooge in A Muppet's Christmas Carol one of his favorite roles. I, yeah. Hands down, one of his best ever roles, Oscar worthy. Mm. I will, uh, I will say that no one is ever allowed to make remake the Princess Bride unless you do it with Muppets. Yeah, one hundred percent. And Carrie Elways has to play Prince Humperdinck, <laughs> <laughs> or no, he has to play the grandfather, and and Robin uh, Kermit's nephew has to play the grandson, and then everyone else is Muppets. <laughs> I still, I still like the idea for a Princess Bride sequel that it's Fred Savage reading the book to his children, and it's just a reinterpretation of how his child is imagining the same story. That's a really great idea, actually. You know, um, William Goldman started writing like mm. a sequel, but like as a bait, like it wasn't a real sequel. Yeah, he just wrote yeah. one chapter. I'm like, why would you do that? <laughs> I was reading Princess Bride to my son and um and I got to the end of the story and I refused to read that that additional bit at the end of the book that because we've got the anniversary edition that has that additional chapter. Uh, and he's like, why would you read it to me? I'm like, because I know you and I know you'll be disappointed that I'll read this and then it will end on a cliffhanger and then you'll want to know what happens and I won't have anything to tell you. Yeah. Because <laughs> it never got written. This is exactly what we talked about in Death of the Author, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> I think William Goldman's just a great big troll. Yeah, that too. <laughs> it's the troll, everyone. Anyway, we should All move right. on to the last one. This is our final book. <clears throat> After reading this book, I realised that just because something is considered a classic doesn't mean it can't be shit. <laughs> Seems to be a running theme tonight, doesn't it? It does, does. not narrow it down at all, yeah. <laughs> no. For the most part, I didn't really know what was going on. The characters talk like Yoda from Star Wars. Yes, it had its moments. It even had a quote or two that I put up on my blog because I thought, hey, that's a really awesome quote. But overall, it was shit. Ladies and gentlemen of Goodreads, if you value your sanity, do not read this book. Something where the characters sound like Yoda. So they're yes. speaking like... Is this like one in... by one of the Russians? <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> You're desperate is... for the Russians, Julian. <laughs> Do you want me to quickly find one for the Russians? Yes. No. <laughs> I don't want to start an international war. Oh, okay. This tensions are so heightened right now. <laughs> we don't yeah. want to cause anything this, further. This is what can cause it. One person in Australia had bad opinions about Russian authors. <laughs> that we read off the internet. <laughs> have, Julian, have you read any of the Russian authors' books? I have not. Actually, I understand there Crime you and go. Punishment is supposed to be quite a good book. So. Yeah. I have a copy of Crime and Punishment on my shelf that I will get to at some point. Uh, but anyway, so back to Yoda. All right. Uh, <laughs> it's not like the novelization of Star Wars, is it? <laughs> it is not. Ah, I should have thrown that in as a red herring. Oh, I'll give you dear. a clue, Eloise. This is a book you have read. It's a book I have read. I, I know 100% you have read this book. I'm not sure about Julian. Oh, but this okay. is a book you have read. Now I'm gonna look at my bookshelf. Current current theme of the tonight seems to be it just because it's a classic doesn't mean it can't be shit. Are we talking Midwest classic again? Midwest America. Uh, this is a book that was written in the 1800s, so it's oh. an old it's an older book, Ooh, set okay. in. Uh, I'll give I'll give you the setting. Mm -hmm. While it does mention America, it's mainly set in Europe. Mainly set in Europe. It does mention America. What's the genre? Uh, it's another case. If I tell you the genre, I think you're going to get uh, it. Okay. Um, 
this this was a foundational book for this genre though Ooh, foundational book okay is it like war of the worlds perhaps it is not no no okay uh is it a the time machine love... Ooh, the time machine no it is not the time machine anything by jules verne no okay anything by hp lovecraft no no okay uh, anything um... by hg wells no it is not well, that's War of the Worlds. <laughs> hmm. Could have been another book by H.G. Wells. Oh, that, yeah, no, that's true. The Time Machine is also him. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, something by Oscar Wilde. Ooh. No, not Oscar Wilde, but good guess. Mm. Is it a female author? I think it was written in the 1800s. I'll double check that. But no, it is not a, um, female, not a female author. author. Okay. Um, this, this book has had... Many, many adaptions, some better than Sherlock others. Holmes. There is actually a book, uh, a movie coming out, I think, next year mm. that is not based specifically on this book, but definitely inspired by it. Oh, that. <laughs> and it is a remake I... of an older movie that was also inspired by this book. Oh, that, that just published, makes it harder. Published in 1897. Have, so. Dracula? And yes. I've read it. Oh, it was, oh, of course, Dracula. Dracula. Ah. Oh. Of course, uh, Nosferatu, I think, is coming out next year. Oh, okay. Uh, I know with Bill Skarsgård, yeah. Yes. I am so oh, looking forward to that, that movie. Oh, it's very the, interesting. Watch the trailer. Mm. It looks so good. Robert okay. Eggers yeah. is directing. Oh, he knows okay. what he's doing with horror films. Mm. He's no Mike Flanagan, but he's good. No. Yes. Well, I disagree with that that review. <laughs> oh, I do too. I really enjoyed Dracula. Uh, yeah, like it, it's a uniquely styled book. And as you say, yeah, like a, you know, beginning of a of a genre. Yeah, because if I, if I said it was a foundation of the horror genre. Mm, yes. <laughs> immediately would have sprung to mind. Mm. Have you read Dracula, Julian? Julian? Yeah, back when I was in... 17 or 18 i read it no so only like 10 years ago <laughs> i think i read it not long it's after so the um the uh, gary oldman film came out oh um, yeah that's a that's a good movie mm. and i think it very is. faithful to the book too in a lot yeah. of ways yeah mm. not not cute yeah not exactly think, not 100 percent. i think famously this that gary oldman when known writer didn't get along mm. so i've heard I think mm. it's faithful to the book in the same way that the Lord of the Rings adaptations are faithful to the book. Okay, yeah. Very much in the same fair. vein, the same style. Um, it doesn't like, like hit I love, everything, everything beat by yeah. beat, but is like it's yeah. still the same story. It's definitely the finish. spirit of the book anyway. And I love Keanu Reeves to death, but that was just so very bad. I think Keanu Reeves <laughs> so even... He yeah, pretty, he said yeah. it was just terrible. He there there were a few films bad. around that time that he's like, I love Much Ado About Nothing. Kenneth Branagh's Much Ado About Nothing. <laughs> he is so bad in that film. Keanu Reeves, that is. Like, love him to death. Man, don't let him do Shakespeare. <laughs> he has this one line where he says, um, I am not of many words, but I thank you. And every time he goes to say that, all I can hear in my head is, I know Kung Fu. <laughs> Oh my uh, gosh. Keanu definitely has I don't know, a limited range, but when he plays in that range, he's just great. Put him in an action film where he gets to shoot all the bad guys, and I'm happy. Having said that, he was in that movie The Gift, I think it was, with Kate Blanchett, where she plays a psychic or a medium. Oh yeah, he was too. Stuff. He was amazing as the bad guy in that film. I've not seen that one. I haven't seen it either. He is so creepy in that movie. Oh, wait. No, I have seen that one. Yeah. No. Mm. You're right. Very good film. Very, he's very good. He's very creepy. You're right. He apparently um, was not meant to be a big part of the movie. Oh. He signed on as a, as a favour to a friend of his who then went, Keanu Reeves is now in this film. I'm going to make the film all about him. Um. And he was very upset about that. Oh. Keanu was upset about that? Yeah. Because well, he, oh, okay. he didn't sign on for that. 
Mm. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Anyway, that that's was... a that's a non sequitur. <laughs> oh, it's always worthwhile talking about Keanu Reeves. True, it is. Yeah. Well, Brighton, can you plug that other podcast again where you uh, where yes. you stole this idea from? <laughs> essentially, it was Two to Ramble, another lovely book podcast that I listened to. Maybe better than ours. Never. Right. Ooh. Yeah. Never. Or well, probably. Well, they put out like two episodes a week. I well then better than so, ours. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they clearly have a much more time on their hands than we do. We have quality <laughs> over quantity. Do uh, we though? No. No. Okay. We have neither. We can't, we can't back that up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, thank you everyone for joining us once again this week uh, for listening to We're Not Helpful. You can follow us on all of the socials. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Pop us a, you know, five-star review if you feel like it on Apple Podcasts or whatever. please email in with your reviews of books that everyone else liked, but for some reason you just didn't. Oh, yes. And we'll read them out. And (laughs) yes, yes. love to get one-star reviews. If you want to pay us to advertise anything, um, mm. please, we will. Anything? Yeah. Anything Any, at okay. all. You anything. Know we'll do it ironically if it's something we don't agree okay. with. We'll if just you pay I'll me, let... I'll advertise it for you. I will let you guys handle that then. <laughs> I'll just read the whole thing very sarcastically so everyone knows I don't agree with it. But If you're paying me a lot of money, I'll read it <laughs> however you want. <laughs> it reminds me of a meme I saw of someone screenshot a tweet where someone said like on the bus reading Mein Kampf but shaking my head every 30 seconds so to make sure people know I don't agree with it <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh like... <laughs> dear wonderful all right um yes. but yes if you do wish to email us you can email us at not helpful pod at gmail.com that is correct well done Hooray! thank you All right. Uh, Well, once again, I'm Eloise. I've been joined by Brayton and Julian. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And they're doing that whole, they're not on the call bit anymore. (laughs) Wonderful. (laughs) We will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, everyone.